everyone, Neve here, and today I am doing the next installment of the deep dive into the Forest of Enchantment Tarot, and we are on the deck interview part. So um, I rewrote out the deck interview questions and the spread real quickly here. Not sure if you can see, but there we go. Um, and it's basically going to be um, exactly like the last deck interview I did on this channel, which was for the Pacific Northwest Tarot. Um, and I don't necessarily do this for every single tarot deck I have. Lately, I've only been doing it for um, my uh, whatever decks I'm doing a deep dive on. Um, but I, I do feel like I, I do like to do this and I think I might um, do deck interviews uh, for most of my tarot decks, even if I don't end up doing a full deep dive for them. Um, so the, how this deck interview kind of goes is it is, it is a bit of personifying my deck. Um, I do sort of feel that each of my decks has its own energy, um, but it's also the energy that I'm putting into it. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mix. Um, I, I, I do have animistic beliefs, so I, I do believe that everything has its own energy. Um, I don't necessarily believe that this deck has its own consciousness, um, but uh, I do feel like some of the answers that I'm getting are partially uh, subconscious on my level. Um, the cards I'm pulling are my own sub subconscious energies, um, but it's also a little bit of it is the deck itself. Um, yeah, so, so uh, if I mean, that's not going to resonate with everyone, um, and that's okay, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I am going to have this, like, zoomed out a bit like this. Um, I might zoom in at different spots. Maybe I'll have to do that in my edit, in editing. I don't know, but, um, if my voice, the volume of my voice changes very much, it's just that I'm coming up to the camera to see if I'm in frame or not. The camera is quite high. Like my face level is about here. I don't know if you can see, this is where my face level is. So the camera is way up here. <laughs> um, so I have to stand up to see uh, if things are in frame and, and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna take a few deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. Um, I don't have uh, any like incense going or uh, crystals or whatever and um, I don't have any uh, candles going or anything like that so this is just um, as it is. <laughs> the background here is uh, the fabric that I'm going to be using for the, um, the Wonder, Wonder World Tarot which uh, I backed on Kickstarter. Um, and uh, I haven't gotten it yet, but I bought this fabric specifically for it. And um, I just wanted to use it now because I was kind of sick of the crocheted background I've been, <laughs> I've been using. So um, yeah, I pulled this out. Uh, it doesn't exactly go with this deck, but I, it's okay. It doesn't bother me any. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it bothers the, de the deck. It depends on how personified this deck is. All right, so. For the first question, I first say hello to the deck. So, hello, Forest of Enchantment Tarot. How would you like to introduce yourself? How would you like to introduce yourself? How would you like to introduce yourself, Forest of Enchantment Tarot? This right here. Oh, the Two of Visions. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here. All right, two of visions. What a nice, uh, what a nice card to get for this. Um, wow. So I, I feel like the the this deck is introducing itself as someone that, uh, at, well, someone as as something as as an energy that I can trust um, and come to uh, in times of need and uh, very comforting. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, introducing itself to me in a very comforting sort of way. Um, all right. Um, and I will pause and, oops, and write that on here. So I'm going to pause it real quick and write my, okay. Now 
Um, so I wrote a uh, trusting, kind partnership. Uh, the Force of Enchantment Tarot is letting me know that I can trust its m messages and it will work with me instead of against me. So the next question, um, what would you like me to know about you? So Force of Enchantment Tarot, what would you like me to know about you? What would you like me to know about you? All right. What would you like me to know about you? Ooh, that was my favorite um, card in this deck. So we've got another two. Um, this is definitely a deck that's going to be working with me. And I said that with the two visions. Um, it's, you know, coming to me as a deck that it wants to work with me instead of against me. And then we get another two. And this is definitely a deck that wants to work with me. Um, now I am coming to this reading with some preconceived ideas because um, just because this deck will tell me uh, I want to be worked with in this way um, and I will take that into account but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only way that I will work with this deck um, but uh, because I do, I, ha I do have some preconceived ideas sometimes when I get a deck of, oh, I want to use this deck for X. Um, and uh, if the deck seems adamantly opposed to that, then I will take that into consideration. Um, but uh, in general, my, what I already have preconceived is um, a bias that I'm going to have toward this reading. And my uh, preconception with this deck is that I feel like I'm going to be using this deck primarily for magical purposes. Not necessarily in spe spells or things like that, but more about spells. Like if I'm doing a reading um, about spell work or uh, what sort of magical uh, thing that I should do in X situation, or if I should do, uh, do a spell or other sort of uh, magical working, um, this is, I think, the deck that I want to use for that. Um, it just gives me that sort of energy. And so getting the two of spells here, um, one, this is a, especially in this deck, this is a card that really shows, um, I'm zooming, I'm getting close to the camera here, so sorry if my sound changed, um, but this is a, card specifically in this deck that really taps into that divination sort of energy and so it's letting me know that this is a great divinatory deck and um and i really am getting that here with the two of spells so i am going to pause it now and write that in my journal and then we'll continue okay so i wrote um for the two of spells this is a great divinatory deck uh, it will help me set magical plans. Um, yeah, so that's really what I got from that. So what are your strengths? Okay, so um, Forest of Enchantment Tarot, what are your strengths? All right. What are your strengths? I feel like it's over here. Let's see. And this is going to be right down here. Oh, I'm a little low on here. All right, so four of visions, fascinating. Oh, and I, or yeah, so it goes right here. <laughs> okay, looking at my, um, my spread. All right, let me make sure I'm in frame and I am. Okay, so four of visions. So, um, I think, you know, because the four of visions or four of cups often has to do with a sort of apathetic nature um, or uh, not seeing the good that's around. Um, and I feel what I initially got from this was I feel like it's going, it's going to be very unbiased. It's not going to sugarcoat things. It's going to, uh, say what it is, uh, whether, you know, it, that's boring to me or exciting or whatever. It, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and that's sort of what I'm getting from here, but, uh, I am sort of getting um, the feeling that it's going to really show things that I'm not seeing because I feel like this person is not seeing all the beauty around him. Um, and uh, I, I do feel like uh, the Force of Enchantment Tarot, uh, what it's saying here is uh, its strengths are going to um, show me what I've kind of been ignoring 
um, so things that I've been ignoring is what it's going to bring to light. So yeah, that's what I get from that, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and write in my journal. Okay, so four visions. This deck will help me see what I've been ignoring. Uh, it will be unbiased. All right, so the next card. Okay, um, I had to pause again because uh, one of my kids came home from school. So, all right. Um, so the next question is now that after uh, the what are your strengths, this are what are your limitations? Because I don't like the word weaknesses. That's not um, really how uh, I see um, different decks. I don't think they have a weakness per se, but they might have limitations. So what are your limitations, um, Forest of Enchantment Tara? What are your limitations? Let's go with this one. Whoops. All right. So we have the Child of Visions. Man, visions, visions, visions. <laughs> I think I moved this deck upside down. All right, so Child of Visions. Um, let's see. Um, I think I want to grab the book, and um, which I have no problem doing here, and really see, remind myself how this uh, deck uh, defines the Child of Visions or the Page of Cups. So the character traits are gentle, uh, emotionally sensitive, uh, appreciation for beauty, wonder, innocence, Pollyanna, optimism. All right. Um, shadow traits, uh, naive, uh, emotionally vulnerable, unrealistic, oversensitive, easily fooled. Uh, there is potential for great disappointment. Huh. So how might I read that for um, a limitations? Maybe... So when I had said for the four visions how it's not going to sugarcoat. Um, when I said that, I sort of thought to myself, that's, that's not what this is saying. And, <laughs> and I feel like that, and I didn't even write that in my journal part because I was like, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't what I wanted. That's not what I've, I get from that. Um, and now that for the, uh, limitations, the child of visions shows up, which it does have sort of that rosy, uh, rose-colored glasses, um, sugar-coatedness to it. Um, it's it kind of goes into that a little bit, um, and I feel like I feel like oh man, I, I'm sort of thinking to myself because I'm getting like um, back and forth in my head on, on what this is saying. Uh, so the child of visions has abandoned was a, has been abandoned in the forest. So maybe it's always sort of seeing the bright side of the situation, and um, maybe its limitations are that it can be a little too uh, rosy, um, which is the opposite of what I was saying before uh, with the saying, "Oh, it's not going to sugarcoat things," and that's why I, you know that's why I didn't put that in my journal because I was like, "That's that's not what I'm getting from this." It's, I'm not getting that at all. And, you know, like I said, when this came out, that kind of validated what my feelings were there and why I didn't put that in my journal. Is that it, it's almost like that's the exact opposite. I, this deck might sometimes sugarcoat things. And, um, and I think that's its limitation, that it might be a little too rosy about things sometimes. Um, and or put a positive spin on things and i think that's what it's uh what it's saying here its limitations here are that it can be a bit naive about uh the um deeper nature of the readings that i i get from it so that's very interesting um all right i'm gonna go ahead and put that in my journal okay so what i ended up putting in here was uh, for the Child of Visions, this deck can be a bit naive about deeper issues. So that's right. So its strengths are that it can be very unbiased and will help me see things what that I've been ignoring. Uh, but it can be uh, a bit too naive uh, about deeper issues. So that's, that's what I'm seeing here. All right. So the next question is, uh, what can you teach me? So Force of Enchantment Tarot, what can you teach me? Force of Enchantment Tarot, what can you teach me? 
All right. Horse of Enchantment Tarot. What can you teach me? I think it's at the end here. All right. Ooh, the Nine of Visions. That's nice. I like this card in this deck. Um, did I put it as one of my favorites in the when I had three piles? I can't remember. I, I think I did, but if I didn't, I, I would go back. And if, if I did that again, I would put Nine of Visions as one of my favorite cards. And this is my favorite card, so I, I like the cards I've been getting. Lots of visions. Lots and lots of visions here. Um, so what can you teach me? Nine of Visions. Um, so because I want to use this deck for a lot of magical purposes, um, and what I mean by that is like... Um, you know, going to this deck to see the outcome of a spell or whether I should do a spell or, um, what sort of magical, uh, practice I should be, um, engaging in or if I should be engaging in something, things like that. Um, I feel like the Nine of Visions is kind of tapping into that. Uh, and it's saying, what can you teach me? It's what it's going to tell me what my actual desires are, what my actual hopes uh, and wishes, because this is, in my mind, the wish card. Um, and I don't remember if it said uh, wishes in uh, this deck. Let's see. Uh, wish fulfillment, good fortune. Um, and this is the, the, the card uh, in the Visions suit that is the most um, monetary to me. Um, because it is an actual coin being tossed into, so there's a, a monetary aspect to that. Um, so uh, it can, as far as what it can uh, teach me, um, you know, it's to me, it's what I actually want. Um, so here I have maybe an idea of what I want. And with the four of visions, it's, you know, it's someone who's apathetic or uh, they're, looking at what they have they're offered something better but they're not seeing that better thing um and the nine of visions here is just really tapping into that um what are your true wants here and um and this deck will do a pretty good job at teaching me what what i actually want um so yeah so that's what i'm gonna put all right, so Nine of Visions, the Force of Enchantment Tarot will teach me about what I actually want. All right, now, so the next question is, uh, what can I do to strengthen our bond? So what can I do to strengthen our bond? I just flipped a whole bunch of cards over. Let's, let's, uh, maybe shuffle correctly is what I can do to strengthen our bond. <laughs> All right, so let me actually ruffle shuffle here and then we can overhand. All right, what can I do to strengthen our bond, Force of Enchantment Tarot? What can I do to strengthen our bond? And I'm just shuffling until it feels right to stop shuffling. What can I do to strengthen our bond? What can I do to strengthen our bond? This one. All right, so seven of challenges. Um, so to go for what I want to, <laughs> wow, that's what an interesting card to get there. What can I do to strengthen our bond? Seven of challenges. I'm going back to the book here and I'm just, so says things like sneakiness, secrets, strategy, using this in strategy, um, using your wet wits to get what you want. So, ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Using your, this deck will teach me what I actually want and I can strengthen our bond by using my wits to get what I want. Um, fascinating. So using like that, that sentence right there, using your wits to get what you want. That's exactly what it's saying. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and write that. What an interesting card to get for that position. Really interesting. Okay, so I wrote that exact sentence for this, uh, using my wits to get what I want. All right, so the next question is, what else would you like me to know? Force of Enchantment Tarot, what else would you like me to know? What else would you like me to know? What else would you like me to know? 
All right, six of challenges. Fascinating. So this is a card of like getting away from things, getting away from the action, getting away from things. Um, huh. I think I'm going to sit with that one for a while. Six of challenges. So what? I'm going to look that up too. Now I didn't do this for the uh, first few cards, looking up the definitions and stuff in the book. Um, but with these last few, I, I just want to, I've been wanting to do that. So, um, so retreat, uh, deliverance from a dangerous situation, uh, waiting for danger to pass, a chance to regroup. Um, wolves in the mundane world aren't menacing, but these are old world storybook wolves, notoriously big and bad, and they will eat you up. Um, goodness. How, what is the six of challenges? Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to sit with this for a while because I don't immediately have an idea. I, I am going to sit with this for a while. Um, so I, I'll do the, uh, my journal entry a little bit later and I will come back to this. All right. So the final card is what card best represents your energy? Force of Enchantment Tarot, what card best represents your energy? All right, what card best represents your energy? We've got, ooh, the wheel. Oh, the Enchanter's Wheel. I think that's great, actually. Um, let me try to move the camera a little bit so that we can see this. All right, can you guys see that? I hope so. <laughs> Uh, the wheel is a little off here. I might bring it down just a little bit here. Um, so I feel like this this deck is, you know, just saying that what's what what will happen will happen. And um, I the card that best help that best represents this deck is the wheel in that it's it's something that I've helped weave this wheel. Um, and this this wheel is helping me to we weave um, situations in my life. I do still f very much feel like this deck um, will primarily be used for magic or magical purposes. The vast majority of the cards I've gotten have been visions cards. Um, I do have one spells card um, and two challenges and then one major arcana, which is what ha um, a card that represents fate. Um, so things, this is a deck that's going to tell me how things are supposed to be. Um, it might give me a bit more of a naive understanding of that, of uh, these are its limitations. Um, it might be a bit on the naive side. Um, it's, it's going to help me to see what I actually really want and, uh, the, and what I should go for. Uh, but in general, it, it's very connected with uh, fate or what well, fate. It's that's such a tricky thing because I don't believe so much in fate uh, that things are just fated to happen um, that I don't really believe in. But I do believe that um, things happen as consequences for actions, <laughs> of course. And because of that, I think that... Um, there are things that um, if everything goes in the way that it's going and nothing changes, things can be predicted. So we can predict what's going to happen based on what's currently going on. And we can always change directions, go off a different spoke of this uh, wheel here. Um, and that's kind of my understanding of fate is that things are n never like set in stone, but because of how this world is progressing and the choices we are making, we can see what is to come if things don't change, if that makes sense. Um, and I also do believe in things like past lives um, that do actually affect our current lives. So I do believe in things like that. Um, that is more of a faith thing. Um, and I think some of those things, like uh, we're drawn to people that were in our past lives. Um, uh, things like that and um, and so we're more likely to uh, come across people that we have 
uh, had a, some sort of relationship with in previous lives. So in that sense, there's where fate is kind of coming in. And I think this deck really does a good job in tapping into that kind of energy. And that's why it chose uh, the Enchanter's Wheel as the card that best represents it. Um, now, with the Six of Challenges of what would you like me to know? I wonder if this deck will tell me when to back away from things. And um, it, it kind of knows when not to touch certain s circumstances, maybe. That's sort of what I'm getting from that. Like, it, uh, there are certain things that this deck just won't touch um, and is not going to give very good readings on. And I think that's what I'm seeing here, is that it's just, there are certain subjects that this deck is just not well equipped to handle or or to go into and is, uh, is better served doing with other decks. Um, but I still very much get that, even though like most of my cards here have been Visions cards, which are very um, uh, emotional, uh, it, it's also very spiritual. Um, I, I do sort of wish I had gotten more spells cards, uh, only because that's kind of, uh, in my mind, how I, I plan to use this deck. This is kind of my witchcraft deck in my mind. Uh, it, it does a better job for me than, say, the uh, Green Witch Tarot, which a lot of people love, and I did love it for a while, but um, I've kind of moved away from it. And I feel like this deck is serving the purpose that that that, de that I wanted that deck to serve, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write what I thought about for these Six of Challenges and the Enchanter's Wheel. Um, I do notice that there are, uh, you know, half the deck is, or half the spread is uh, these uh, Visions cards, so that's important. Um, and... All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I also noticed that there's no Boons cards here, <laughs> which I, this is the closest Boon card, even though it's a Visions card. It's a, because uh, it's got that money element to it. So I find that very interesting. <laughs> um, that's something to take note of. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. The next video, I believe I will be doing the, um, my, uh, um, meditation spread. So thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you next time. Bye.